What's up, YouTube? Jeremy Weber here, founding member at Brand Builders Group. Today, we are going to dive into the three reasons that you do not need to write a book. So if you're in the middle of writing a book or thinking about it, you definitely want to check this out. So before we dive in, I got to remind you, I got to got to put the put the reminders out there. Please be sure to like, subscribe, all the things that, that we have to do to play the game with the algorithm. So so as we dive into this idea of the three reasons that you do not need to write a book, this content piece was really inspired at a recent event. Um, if you don't know, at Brand Builders Group, we run, you know, kind of at least once a month, we have these intense kind of workshop style events where whether we're coming in person here in Nashville or whether we're getting together online in a Zoom, right, we have 30, 40, 50 clients all working kind of in these breakout rooms, getting stuff done with their strategy to build their brand, build their business, et cetera, right? And so this, this content piece was inspired from a recent event um, where we had a client. He came into the event, um, was really hyper-focused on the strategy to bring his book to market, right? He, he had some interesting kind of like traction already, you know, in place with his business and with some other kind of content he had put out around some other offerings, but he was really hyper-focused on this book. And he spent probably, you know, these are two-day events, so he spent probably the first half of day one really just kind of caught up in, all right, what do I title the book? You know, what content should I put in the book? I know all the content that's part of my like core methodology, my core curriculum that I'm, you know, using uh, for my coaching and consulting, right? As I work with clients that way, what do I, what do I put in the book? And kind of going back and forth really with what I would call the positioning of the book in relation to the the rest of his content and 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 the other things he's selling right now um and so basically i went through these three things with him and and everybody in the room to really kind of level set on you know you know when to go after a book when to write a book when to launch a book when to do it because there's definitely a place to do it and we want to know how to do it and when to do it and do it right when we get to that point but there were these three things that really were key to helping him understand why he did not need to be so consumed and focused on writing a book and bringing a book to market at this point in time. And so number one, reason number one that you do not need to write a book right now is that, drum roll please, that your content is not tight. Your content is not validated. Your content is not kind of clean and solidified. All right, so newsflash. If you don't know that, you know, content when packaged in a book, it's pretty permanent, right? And, um, you know, it's not something that you go through all this great effort to kind of like get it published, you know, whether it's self or traditional, like whatever, um, and get it out there. And it's like, oh, man, like, I feel like, you know, I, that was kind of an early concept. And, and, and I wish I could refine that. I wish you could go back, right? So if you're in the early stages of really kind of defining how you do what you do, right? Your methodology. Um, I would encourage you to not immediately go to thinking, hey, I want to package this in a book. Because, you know, naturally we we think that, um, you know, hey, this is uh, going to help me reach more people, which it does. It's going to help me make some more money. It will. All right. Um, all those things. But if you're in the early days of kind of like solidifying how you do what you do, the process in which you use to kind of help clients get results, right? The reality is you need to run people, hopefully a lot of people through that process uh, to really tighten up how you do what you do, your process, your content, your methodology, right? Um, and then downstream, we can take that, that market validated method, right? That content, and then look at kind of packaging all or a subset into a more kind of, um, you know, a format that can reach more people at a lower cost, i.e. a book. And there's there's other ways. So so kind of the way I would think about this, let's kind of pop up the whiteboard, um, is that really let's, let's think about this as your foundation, right? So let's say there's, you know, seven, eight steps, whatever they are. Right. So this is how you do what you do. Right. And if somebody was to read this book or kind of go through this curriculum, like regardless of how it's packaged. Right. They're going to go from struggling with something to then, you know, not struggling with it anymore and being in a great spot. 
So naturally, if you're in the early stages of this and, you know, like you, you need to validate it, like I just said. Um, and so let's say these are the chapters, right? One through X, whatever, whatever that is, right? But it, right now, because we haven't validated it, we're focused on what is the quickest way to validate and tighten up my methodology or my process, right? So if we look at these people out here, right? These are clients, right? And so naturally, if, if where we're at with kind of how we do what we do in the early stages of kind of building out this methodology that's foundation to your business and how you deliver results for clients, if we're in the early stages of it, we want to kind of run people through it in, in, the, in a way that lets us kind of get that market feedback as quickly as possible. And the reality is packaging it in a book and giving it to people is not that, right? So in the early days, right, again, assuming your, valid, your methodology is not validated, um, we're going to take your process once it's built out and logically structured, which that's something that we'll talk about in some other videos. It's part of our captivating content aspect of our curriculum. But basically, the quickest way to run people through it and get market feedback and adjust where you need to to kind of tighten things up is you as a service, you coaching people or consulting people, um, advising them on, hey, you're doing this wrong, try it this way, X, Y, Z, right? So naturally, if you're doing it you as a service, so just say you as a service, right? You're only going to be able to reach a certain amount of people, which is good and bad, right? But the reality is that lets you get market feedback as quickly as possible. Um, it also lets you tighten up your methodology quickly as quickly as possible um, because you're just tweaking stuff on the fly. We're not having to go back and, and re-edit or do anything in the book that's kind of a static thing that's out there and requires costs and time, money, effort, right? It's very agile and we can iterate quickly, which is key in the early days of kind of your business and, and, and how you go about doing things, i.e. your process or methodology you use to, to kind of deliver results for clients. So that's key number one, right, is if, if it's early days when it comes to kind of defining how you do what you do and refining your content um, that, you, that you kind of share with people to deliver results for them. So key number two, right? So I'm gonna maybe mark this as one. Like you're in the early days of this, right? It's it's a little bit loose. Key number two, right? We'll put this over here is you need money quickly, all right? So if you find yourself in a spot um, where basically you are in the early days of building out your business, your brand, like whatever, um, and you're like, hey, this book is a great idea. Again, it's going to help me reach all these people. It's going to be wonderful. I'm going to go viral, right? Um, but you also find yourself as part of being in the early days where you're like, I got to keep the lights on, right? I, I, I want to continue to pursue this passion. I want to continue to build this business out. Um, you know, then the thing you need to understand is that if you need money quickly, right, to keep the lights on and keep funding this venture, right, whatever it is, um, that a book for almost everybody, right, not everybody, because there's some people that make a lot of money through their books, but that comes downstream. In the early days, especially, if you need money quickly, the book is not going to be your pathway to driving a ton of, of revenue, right, for your business through book sales. It's just the straight up reality of it, okay? So if we pop back over here, is that number two, if you need money, I need money quickly. The fastest path to cash is not spending a bunch of time, money, effort on a book, and then trying to sell a low dollar thing to a lot of people. Book does not equal revenue quickly, okay? So, um, or a lot of it, uh, especially. Um, so the key here is that also you want to look at this same method, you as a service, right? You have a methodology, steps one through whatever, right, of how you deliver great results for people. What's the fastest way to monetize that method? It's taking you and your time um, to deliver that to people, whether you're taking them through it in a workshop setting or doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching or consulting or whatever it is, right? Your time for money, it's not very scalable again, 
but it's ultimately how you're going to drive revenue quickly in decent amounts to keep the lights on, keep funding this business, um, and ultimately, you know, give yourself the opportunity to then reinvest in a book um, that can help you reach more people in a new way at scale, right? So that's key number two. All right. So key number three is that, you know, at this point in time, you do not have the bandwidth, and I would say, and time and money, right, to do a true product launch, right, a true book launch. And so I'm going to put this over here. Key number three is no time, no money for launch. All right. And why this is key right here is that naturally, once we solidify how we're doing it, right, this is like super tight. It's the 10 steps to whatever, right? And it delivers killer results. You've market validated it, right? You've ran a bunch of people through it um, as part of your coaching program or membership program or whatever it is, right? Some place that you could iterate, get market feedback, tighten up really quickly. So you have a lot of confidence in this content. Now we're saying, hey, this is great. Now is the time to look at saying, hey, let's package all or a subset of this into a new form that can reach more people, right? So let's say, hey, there's all these people, lots of them, more people out here that want your help. They can't afford your services for consulting and all that. You're too expensive, right? So the book is going to be, right, that's a book. <laughs> The book is going to be how we reach all these people. It's great, right? So there's a role for it to play, right? The book the book is, is perfect. It's an authority booster, right? It's a platform builder. But most importantly, it drives a bunch of traffic back to other things that you actually can sell and make more money, okay? So if you're not in a position to um, adequately launch the book, all right. And there's a lot of details to how to run a bestseller launch. Um, we'll talk about that some other time as part of our curriculum. But um, if you're not in a position to kind of do a launch, you don't have to do some six figure launch. Right. It can be kind of a simplified version. But if you're not in a position to allocate the time and the money to kind of do an intentional launch, then you probably also want to pump the brakes on the book right now. And that's simply because that, again, if done properly, Right. If you do a launch properly to get this book in the hands of as many people as possible, um, it's going to do a couple key things. Right. It's going to one help you serve and reach more people with your great content that can deliver great results for them. Right. Which that's the heart behind it. We're we're serving people. We're trying to reach more people. We're trying to have an impact on their lives with how you do what you do. Right. So so if you don't run a proper launch you're not getting the book in the hands of as many people as possible. Number two though, which is also, you know, so important is that again, when you run a proper launch, not our, only are you getting your book, right? This book in the hands of all these people, it's great, they're reading it, they're loving it, right? Not only are we getting, you know, let's not forget about these people, right? They want copies of the book too, right? Everybody's got the book. So not only are we getting the book in their hands, which is key step number one, we're doing a slew of other things as part of the book launch to simply drive traffic and sales of other things that make more money. One of those being you going out and giving paid speaking, you know, kind of engagements potentially. Or maybe it's just two that you're driving back to kind of this coaching program back here. So some of these people are like, Hey, you know, like I, I'm loving the book. What else can you do for me? Right. So, so again, there's a time for the book, right? Um, it's really a great accelerator, a way, a way to really kind of scale up what's already working. But if you don't have a foundation in how you do what you do, pump the brakes, right? If you don't have a foundation in how you're funding all of this, i.e., you need some money to just keep keep the business afloat, pump the brakes, right? So that's number two. Or if you're like, hey, this is great, but I just feel spread too thin that I can't really 
be intentional about getting the book in the hands of a lot of people to not only sell as many units as possible, but really to use the launch as a initiative to drive traffic back to my coaching or consulting program or membership program or whatever it is, also pump the brakes because you're not going to maximize the ROI on this whole initiative. So again, if you're in the middle of all this, um, you know, I would encourage you to just pause for a second, think about it. And what's, what's key to remember here is that, you know, I had to remind uh, the client we were working with about this, that, you know, look, it's not that we're not working on the book, right? We're working on the book, right? We, this is actually a fundamental step to work on the book is making sure the content that we're going to put in the book is like killer. It's going to transform the lives of the, of the reader, right? Um, the last thing you want to do is spend all this money and then realize that you actually, you know, with the, the advice you're giving them through the book is like, is flawed a little bit, right? And it's not always going to be perfect, right? You have to find that balance of when to do it, when to not, like just go, I think it's good enough, let's go, and to continue to refine. But if you're in the early days, just focus on, you know, kind of locking down how you do what you do packaging it in a way that can drive revenue quickly to keep the business afloat. And then there'll be a key time when we say, all right, let's divert a little focus in time, money, effort to kind of this book opportunity to reach more people, uh, serve more people, but, you know, also strategically drive traffic back to this other way we monetize um, to continue to just drive growth and, and revenue uh, growth for the entire business ecosystem. So again, hopefully this was helpful. If you find yourself in the middle of doing a book, maybe you can pause, pump the brakes, keep working on the book, but just in a little different angle. Um, and, and if you found this helpful, like I, I would ask again, just please, um, you know, like, subscribe, all the things again that help us just uh, reach more people.